Hi everyone. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> Just got settled in here with all my stuff. Got my kids to bed, so I am ready to paint with you. Put something on my screen here. So I came on here and I was thinking about singing O Canada to you, but I thought no one will ever paint with me again if I do that. So um when it comes to being talented, maybe it's just creating things with my hands because it's definitely not with my voice. So I will spare you that. Uh, as you're popping on, say hi. Let me know you're watching. And I'm going to start fairly soon. I'm going to get right into it. Um, Dave's at work, so the kids are in bed and fingers crossed it stays that way. Um... I forgot to write in the description and the supplies we need that you will need a blow dryer. So if you are painting tonight with me, if you want to take two seconds and go get a blow dryer, um, there's going to be just like a point at the end where we need to blow dry before we put our maple leaf on. That's if you're um, going to be using a stencil. So if you're just going to freehand it, tonight I'm going to show you a way to use a stencil. So uh, if you do want to do it that way and you did print one out, then you're going to need a, to get a blow dryer. Hi, Christine. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> okay. I got my tea. I got... Oh, you know what I didn't do? I did not set up my laptop. Give me one second here. Just let me find myself real quick. And we'll get right started. So yeah, go grab a blow dryer if you didn't yet. And but that's not gonna be till the end. So if you wanna wait, you can. Or if you know, if you wanna like this is gonna be replayed. So if you wanna do all that except for that step, let it air dry, and then you wanna go back and do the maple leaf, feel free. So many options. Um Okay, here I am. Hi Amy, hi Wendy. <laughs> I don't know about lovely, Amy. I've been with the kids all day, so <laughs> this was a quick, like, makeup job. It's all I have, like, time for, like, five minutes uh, once a week to put on makeup, so good thing I don't have, like, a secretarial job or something. All right. Okay, so we are going to get right started. I'm going to tilt the camera down, and um, like I said, if you're not painting with me right now, this will be replayed, so feel free. It is a Canada Day flag painting, so, I mean, if you want to do it later, you're more than welcome just to get experience. Uh, but it really is pertained to this day. So, um, but like I said, you can always, hi Tammy. So you can always uh, come back and do it. Let me just make sure you got a good angle there. And I am left-handed. So if my hand is in the way at any point, please let me know. Okay, I'm gonna swipe those away and we'll get started. So all we need tonight is, um, red paint of any kind. You can have any brand and you can have, this is holiday red, but you can have any red that you need or have. Um, black and white. So just the three colors tonight. We're gonna do a little bit of mixing and it's gonna make a couple different shades. And then we have, I just have 11 by 14 media paper, uh, a half inch flathead brush, and then I have just a pointed tip, which isn't really too pointed anymore. Let me see, I have another one in here, do I? Well, I got this one here. So we got a pointed tip, and then I have a couple different sizes here. If you can see the difference, let me hold them up for you. So I'm just gonna use the smaller one tonight, but if you have only this one or a little bit bigger, that's no problem. This painting is flexible. Most of the paintings I do are. Um, I think maybe because I'm self-taught, I taught myself many different ways with different utensils. It might not even be 100% the right way, but it seems to work out. So we're gonna go with that. And okay, so we're gonna get, we'll start with red and white on our plate. I'm just gonna put a little bit of red. And if you need to add more after you can, and we're gonna work on the two sides of the flag first. And we're gonna be going with our half inch flathead first. And we're just gonna be painting this side and this side and we'll do the middle after. So what we're gonna do 
is we're not going to be shy with the paint. If you did the one with the blending with me, you know that I'm never too shy with the paint. So uh, especially for this technique. So you're going to go in, you're going to get a good amount into the red. You're going to have like that. And you're just going to make like a figure eight motion. So this part is kind of, you can be sloppy with this. You can be messy. Um, and you're just going to go side to side, kind of like making this motion here. Just up, down, up, down. So you have these little square pieces that you can see. It's not uniformed. And then I'm going to do that until our brush runs a bit thin of paint. And then we'll dunk into the white. And we're just going to kind of go like this, same way, just back and forth. And we're going to keep switching. So then we'll go into the red. And you'll have, you're going to get different shades here. And that's kind of what we want. And if you feel like, you know, you can work with this. So if you feel like it's too much white because it is the side of the flag is red, then you just go more into the red. So if you feel like here it's showing a bit too much red or it's looking a little pink, you can always just kind of wipe off your brush and just go back into the red. And just go on top. Just so you have more of the red showing for the sides. And just back and forth. So when I swipe one way, I've got one side of the brush on there and I come up and I'm flipping and I'm going back down with the opposite side and I'm coming back and I'm flipping with the other side. So it's just like a rotation. You can also do um, your red and then you could just kind of add some white in here and there. You want to just lighten it up a bit. So just back and forth. And it's kind of cool because you get the different, you can see the different textures here. Now we have a little bit, it's a little bit of a lighter red and then deeper and then some white. So if you wanted to, not that you want to make it uniform because that's the whole point, but if you find like down here, maybe there's not any mixture, you can just go back down here like this. And that's going to kind of give it that look. We're going to cover this with the flowers anyways. We just want to have a background base so that when we have the in between the flowers, it doesn't look plain. It looks, you know, like there's something back there. I'm a big fan with acrylic. You have to layer. Um, if you don't layer with acrylic, it's it doesn't look good. So um, any painting you do, like even to this day, and I've done painting for 10 years, if I do the first layer of acrylic painting, I hate my painting. I'm always like, this painting's ugly, it's not turning out. Um, but then you can add, you know, your your second layer, your third layer, and then all of a sudden it kind of just, with acrylic, it's just like hideous, and then it's just beautiful. It kind of just all comes in once you add your, your layers and your textures and your different tones and your shadowing. So definitely for acrylic, acrylic is very flat, so the layers will really help bring it out. So yeah, so we're just going to do that. And then when you're done this side, we're just going to come over here and do this side. Now, don't worry if you didn't leave enough space in the middle for your white because we are, like I said, layering. We're going to come back and we're going to put um, the white in the middle. So when we start reaching the sides, it's going to kind of all blend in nicely. So there is no right or wrong for this uh, painting. You just go with the flow and you'll see what looks good as you as you do it move this over a bit so we're doing the same exact thing with this side here so if anybody's just joining I'm just doing a figure eight so I'm going this way that way I'm actually like I'm literally slapping the paint on to the canvas <laughs> or my got media paper tonight but I don't know if you can hear it but and I'm just gonna I'm alternating back and forth so when my brush is going down, it's going flat on this side. 
I'm swooping into a figure eight, coming back around, and I'm hitting the canvas with this side. So it's just back and forth, back and forth. I'm doing some white mixed in with the red. And it's looking very Canada Day-ish so far. Anybody have any plans for the weekend? I know we're gonna do some uh, fireworks here. It's kind of a tradition every year we do the fireworks in our backyard. Um, the neighbors watch <laughs> and we usually have our parents over. Last year, Lily was too scared so she went to bed. She was only three, she's four now. So she claims that she is brave and she's gonna be watching the whole thing. So we will see, <laughs> but until the first boom goes off. But I remember being terrified of the fireworks like until I was like six or seven, so I can't really say much. Okay, so we have both sides here. I'll give these guys a few minutes just to see if there's anywhere else that you wanna to touch up on each side. I might go back over here a little bit and just kind of, you can kind of see um, if I put it up to the camera that, I don't know if you can see that, but some of the swipes you can still see like the white paper through. So, um, for, for, if you want to go back over this and just kind of hit where it looks a little thin, um, I like to do that. But like I said, the flowers are going over it too, so we don't have to go too crazy. And same with the white, you can add more white in. And the more you go over it, it's just gonna kind of blend it into being, you don't want stark white because there's gonna be white in the middle, but just, a, you want kind of like a two, three tone thing going on here. Hi, mom. If nobody's watching your live, you can always count on your mom to be watching your live. <laughs> there we go. So now when we're done that part, we are going to take our brush and we're going to wash it off. Let me know how everybody's doing with timing, whoever's painting with me. Uh, I have an 11 by 14 uh, multimedia paper here, so if you have anything larger, this might take you a bit longer. I'm going to repost this video right after, so if you fall behind in any way, uh, it's going to be reposted immediately after. So, but I will try to uh, slow down if anyone needs me to, just let me know. And you don't want to make sure your brush is cleaned up pretty good because red, red is very strong too, just like black is. Um, it stays in the brush, so I want to clean it out pretty good because we're going to be going to the white after. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some more just white on our plate. If you haven't, don't have, well, you have white already, but put a little bit more just um, because we're going to have to do the middle. So we're going to have the white here, but then we're going to put a little bit more here. And then we're going to take the red and actually, if you have any left on your plate, I do. If you don't, just put like a tiny, tiny dot. We want to make like a really, really soft pink. So we're just going to take a little tiny bit and mix it in here with the white. If you just have a light pink, you can do that, but I want it to be very slight in color. 
because we want to still achieve that two-tone, but we don't want to get rid of the fact that the flag in the middle is white. Mm -hmm. So we're going to mix that in. If you can see, there is a slight change. I'm going to put a little bit more. Then you can see so we have like a very very pale pink and then our white would be there and we're gonna start with our white don't worry about washing your brush out if you have the pale pink in there that's perfect <laughs> hey honey <laughs> he says i'm sneaking sneaking a peek too don't tell the boss <laughs> are you on break oh you're on lunch <laughs> looking great so far uh, I think your opinion might be biased. <laughs> okay, so we have the white. Um, we're loading it up, the brush up with white, and we're just doing the same figure eight in the center. Um, we are going to go a little bit over this edge. We don't want to leave a gap. So we're going to start here, and we're just going to continue to slap it on. And you're going to go into the light, light pink a, a bit. And then you're just going to do the same thing, kind of alternate back. So you'll see white and light pink. Did you end up getting the wood you were looking for, Tammy? I know you said you were looking for some today. You wanted to put this outside, which is a great idea. We said a painting like this. I mean, it is Canada Day, but we are Canadian and we live in Canada. So, I mean, really, you could do this anytime. You could hang this at any point. And that's why when I did my Canada Day kids art kits, I thought they'd be really cute for their lockers when they go back to school they could, you could put like a little magnet behind and I mean it could be really for all year round it doesn't have to just be for Canada Day but I'm starting to get some people sending pictures in of their kids doing it and it looks they look so good I can't wait to post them and we're just going back and forth we want this mostly to be white in the center but uh little bit of light pink in there and you can see kind of how I was able to with the white kind of make the sections pretty even especially when you have when you use the half inch flat brush you can cover a lot of area these brushes hold a lot of paint so um, you don't have to load up a ton usually when you're using especially if I mean, I'm only doing an 11 by 14. Um, with a half inch flat brush, you're gonna cover your surface fairly quickly. So yeah, and there we go. So we have that. And I'm gonna clean up my brush again. You got eight minutes left to go, honey? Left of your break? My mom says must be hot in there, yeah. Yep. What are you on now? Uh, your eighth mana? <laughs> Last break, you're on your fourth, so. <laughs> so we're just going to wash off our brush. Take a sip of tea. Not move too quickly. <laughs> I always write myself a note. Slow down. Have fun. Sometimes I forget it's not a race. I think because I do orders and I need, I want to get the orders out. I, I don't know, maybe it's just conditioned in me <laughs> from my past, but if I have an order, I want to do it immediately. I want to do it as fast as I can. But when I'm doing a paint night, when I'm sitting here re relaxing, enjoying, this isn't the same demand. This is slow down, enjoy yourself, relax. And I think I really since I'm fairly new to this virtual paint party thing, I think the last paint party I did, I really saw a shift. Hi, Nancy. I really saw a shift in 
really just enjoying doing this and not, it's not like work. It's like, this is something I really, really thoroughly enjoy showing everybody. Um, because I want you to see how you can start at point A and just, you know, do point B, point C and just get, you can get there. And I just, I love it. I know there's one, uh, I think Tammy right now is on. She has been painting, I think the last three or four with me and you can just see the improvement because like I said, painting is just the practice, right? It's practice of just getting used to painting and just knowing what kind of style you like and everything like that. So really, I just, I love to see the, the progression. More like, <laughs> Dave says, more like 10th glass of water. <laughs> You're probably sweating it all out though. Not too many bathroom breaks. <laughs> Okay, so let's go on to the next step. We are gonna start our roses or our little flowers on the side. So we are gonna get some red. If you don't have any red on your plate or not enough left over, then just get some more. And we are gonna go down to our, uh, let me see what I got here, our little flathead brush. I'm just gonna take, there's a few loose bristles, I'm just gonna, Cut them off, give me one second. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna go into the red. We're gonna get a good amount on there. And we're gonna stick just in the red sections. So um, we are going to do little circular motions now we're gonna move our whole arm. It's not gonna just be the wrist. If you move just your wrist, you're gonna get an oval shape. We wanna get a round shape, but we wanna have different sides to it. So it's not gonna be a perfect circle. So we're gonna stop, go down on our point here, and we're just gonna move the bristles in a circle. You can go back and forth. And we're just gonna make little circular shapes. So. I'm gonna move this closer because it is red on red. And this is the whole reason why I do the two-tone underneath because if I just did red, you wouldn't be able to see these circles. So if you can see there that circle, it's just a bit darker. And we're just gonna continue this in um, whatever pattern. I usually kind of go like, I'll do one beside it and then one a little offset. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna keep kind of twirling the brush until they look, you don't want them to be nice and smooth on the edge. You want them to have like, those are the petals, right? And you can do different sizes. They don't have to all be perfectly the same size. I'm just gonna go all the way down. And do that. And this is just the beginning of these flowers. So we have a couple layers to do, let's say three or four layers, and that's what's gonna give it the dimension. So no worries about this looking like just blobs of paint ruining your figure eight. <laughs> it will all come together, I promise. We're just going all the way down. Christine says, I thought they were poppies. You know what? They, yeah, they could actually, when I do these flowers, I never really, I guess I don't really put a name to them. I just, I like the way that they're, they look and I think of roses, I guess. And yeah, poppies for obviously Canada Day. I never... I guess I should have thought of that, eh? That was a dumb moment. But yeah, when I do them, I don't know. I did them in blue the other day too. So 
I don't know. I just think of them as they're just pretty little flowers. And they're so easy to do, too. You can really add them to anything, and it just kind of lightens up everything. I'm just going to keep going all the way down. And just little circular motions. And you can even put one like half off the page. That way it doesn't look like they're all... And then we're going to do that on the opposite side as well. So I'll put it a little closer so you can see what we got here. So we kind of have just little circles, all different. They're not the same in any way and just not circular, just like the shapes of petals on the outside. And we'll do that same thing on the other side. And when I do these flowers, I am doing them like flat like this. So they're not lit. My brush isn't laying like this. It's up and I'm just doing little circular motions. Is Lily good? Yeah. Okay. You good, Lily? Yeah. Okay. For every single flower that I do, I am putting more paint on my brush. So every time I go to a new flower, I put I load it up with more paint. Tammy says, not a good painting to do after arm day. Feel the burn. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You're getting a double workout today. <laughs> yes, honey? Benny, can you go get them for her, please? What, Ann? I don't know. Go get them for her. Yeah. Can you use There's ants in my daughter's room and she's freaking out. Every night. There's an ant in her room. There were spiders in her room every night. And then I made some very, very magical spider spray. Um, and I guess I'm going to have to put my talents together and make some ant spray next. Welcome to summer. I grew up in the country, so there was like bugs in my house like all the time <laughs> like uh beetles and <laughs> i'd find them like because we'd hang our clothes out so i'd find them in like my clothes when i put them on <laughs> they'd go in there and we would always have like this you know i had the field mice and all that crap so i guess i think i'm just used to having that all around but she gets very scared our house is very dirty no it's not <laughs> it's really good yeah. No. Does it look dirty to you? Like, uh, our garage is... 
Well, like, the girl is a whole different like, situation. Like, <laughs> oh, so I can't go in there. All right, go to your room and watch your TV, okay? okay. Mommy's got to finish this up. Okay. You got to love kids. We'll say it how it is. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to fill in these red flowers. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take that pink um, that we made here and we're just going to put a little bit more red into it. So we're just going to take and add some more red. So we kind of have like a little bit of a medium pink there. It's still a bit light, but, and we're just going to do little commas with this brush here. So this is still the same brush that we used for doing the flowers, but we're just going to take and we're just going to flick little commas just like that in the flowers. And then what you can do, you can do maybe like four. You want this to, the pink still to be wet. And then I'm just going to go back into the red. And I'm just going to do more commas just around the pink. Just so they kind of blend in a bit. So kind of like that. And you can see it's starting to look, starting to come together. Just little commas. And then you can go back into the pink and just do the same thing. And you're trying to keep the shape. So when I look at my flower, it's got, let's say, a bump here. So it's got a bump going this way. So then I take this lighter color and I do a comma that way. So it's kind of accentuating out that specific spot. Um, same here, I have another one, so I just do this. And then I do a couple small ones in the middle. And go back to the red and just kind of blend it out like that. And it's really just like a quick flip. So you don't have to go too too crazy with your with the pressure of your hand, just a quick kind of like if you if I was to do it in slow motion, it would be put it down and just flick. So pick your spot you want to start and then just flick it. And back into the red and around. you'll really see it I'm starting to look even with just a second layer you can already see it coming together I think the last time I did a live while my kids were awake, I think they started fighting over who was going to show what paint colors we were using. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> Mom life. Mom life trying to create something, I guess. <laughs> Oh, 
How's everyone doing so far? Is everyone keeping up okay? Everyone understanding what I'm saying all right? My Wi-Fi was screwing up a little bit today, so I was a bit worried, but... All right, so once we have that side done, we're gonna skip over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. So just a little bit into the pink. I guess it really just depends how fast you go for how fast you go back and put red in. Um, you kind of want the pink to still be a little bit wet just so it doesn't, the red will just go right over the pink if it's not wet and it'll just hide it again. So you kind of want it to be wet so that when you, when the paint, red paint goes over that, those pink commas you put, it kind of smears it together. So it's not a perfect blend. It's more just like mix and match smears. You can always, too, like say you waited too long and it did dry, you can always go back and just do more pink. When I'm kind of putting it together, putting the two colors together, I like to make sure I'm still keeping the shape of the outside. So I'm not you know, making it into a circle all of a sudden, it still has the different bumps going around. <laughs> Mary says, Tammy quit whining. <laughs> you better be nice or she's not gonna give you this painting to put on your wall. <laughs> it's funny. We're just going around and following the edge. And I'm just gonna finish up this last flower here and I'm just gonna go check my daughter because I think she's crying. <laughs> One second. So you guys take your time, catch up. Um, if you are caught up, I will be right back in one second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to work on the center flowers. So we're going to do the same 
thing here. We are going to start with white though, and we're going to make our circles with just white. So we are still using the small flathead brush and loading up with quite a good amount of paint. And we're just going to go in circles. So same exact thing as we did with the red flowers. And it's okay if you, we might go back and just kind of put like a red flower over top just so we don't have this exact defined line. But I'll place the white flowers first and we'll see how it looks. So just circular motions. Um, and like I said, you can go over that line a bit. You can just pick the places where you want your flowers if you want them to be closer in and tighter i mean it's all a everyone has a different view of what things look like so or how they want it so if you want them to be closer you can always put them closer and then just kind of separate them with the different colors we put in so they can still be overlapping but then you can just tell that it is a separate flower once you put the other colors in And these flowers here on my on my paper, um, they're probably like an I'd say like an inch uh, in diameter, so an inch this way, an inch that way. Um, but like you could do little tiny ones, or you could do really big ones. And they're all a little bit different; like they're not all exactly the same size. But you could even do. Uh, like a big one like this and then just a little tiny one and kind of throw some small ones in. There's so many different options. But I love doing these flowers and I thought, you know, why not make the flag with them? I thought it'd be cute. So I think it turned out pretty good. I've seen an American flag done like this before where there's the stars in the blue. They put these flowers and it looks really cute. So now um, when we're done that, we're going to just switch it up and we're going to go right into the red. So for these, we're going to do the center um, of these flowers with the red first. Um, the darkest color besides, we are going to be using black on this, but um, besides black, the next darkest color we're going to put in the center of the flower. So um, we didn't do the red, obviously, for this flower because it is red. So when we get to the black, we're going to mix a little bit of black and red and then we'll go from there. But um, you're going to go into the red and just because the red is so strong, you're just going to have, where am I, the very edge of that with red. You're not going to have it like all over the place, just on the very edge. And you're going to do the same comma effect. So just little commas. And just a little 
the, in, the, in the middle there. And then we're going to do the same thing. So I wipe off, because it has red so strong, I wipe off kind of the extra red and then I go into the white and I just do the same thing. So I just kind of brush over. The little commas. You're gonna start to see these flowers will really come together once you start adding the black in, because you kind of you're more defining the shape of the flower. Let's go back in. And don't worry about your paintbrush having too much paint if you're in the white. Like, you want to kind of make it be able to glide. I feel like it's so quiet tonight. I kids are in bed and I don't have anything on. Silence is golden sometimes. <laughs> so I'm just continuing on with all these flowers, just giving the little red commas. You could also do this with a um, if you wanted to put the commas in, you could do it too with a fine tip brush, but I find just it's easier to go back with the blending if you already have the paint on your, on the flathead one. I'm excited to share my next paint night with you. Um, I painted it, I think, yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. And it was different. It was sunflowers, so a different form of flower, but it was fun to do. I'm excited. It's going to be a two-part, two-night paint night, though, because the details in it with the fence and the jar and all that, it's a lot. So I thought I'd divide into two, but... If you can only make one of them or you want to watch the replay, I will have a replay going for you. But 
at the end of this video, I'll show you what we're going to be painting next. And that's going to be uh, July 10th and 11th, both at 8 p.m. Christine says we lost you. Am I back? Just let me know, guys, if I'm here. Can everybody see me okay? Let me type in here. Just give me a, a like or a heart or anything just to let me know if you can see me okay if my Wi-Fi is kicked back in. No? Hmm, that's weird. It shows like it's videoing. Hmm. Tell me if I come back now. You I can see you can see mom? Okay. Hmm. I'll wait for a couple more people to tell me if they can see me or not before I continue. So just send me a thumbs up or tell me, okay, Tammy, yours is okay. Maybe Christine, try to go, here, I'll type it just in case. Okay, so you know. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm back. I'm back in action. Sweet. Okay. All right, guys. Okay, so um, we did this step with all the flowers. Um, is everybody caught up to this point so far? Just let me know if you're caught up and then I will go on to the next step. I'm gonna clean off my brush right now. We're gonna go to the pointed, the pointed brush. Christine, you're good, awesome. I got two Christines here? Yeah, I do, cool. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we are gonna go to the pointed brush. I don't usually use this one because it's a bit long, so I might switch halfway through, but I will start with this and see how it goes. So I have here um, my pointed tip, and we're gonna put some black on our, on our plate here. And I'm going to put a little bit of red on there too. We're going to mix them in. But don't put them on top of each other just because the black will overpower. Just put it beside. Okay. I'm almost out of red as you can tell. And I'm just going to move over. You know what? Okay, here. Let me see here. Go back to your small flathead for a minute. And we're just going to mix a tiny bit. So you're just going to take a very small amount of black on your brush and then you can go into your red. And you're going to come out with like a burgundy color. It shouldn't be much darker than a burgundy. That's what you're trying to achieve. Like a deep wine color. So you'll see there... It's a bit darker than the red. You can even go a tiny bit more. Okay. 
the black paint eventually turns like if you put too much black paint it will turn anything into black so you want to go a very small amount at a time just so you don't overdo it okay so we have like a nice wine color there you can see the difference between this and then the red i have beside it so we're gonna stick with this brush i lied <laughs> we're not going to the pointed one yet and we're gonna do little commas just in the red flowers so um the ones in the, the middle are good for now and we're just gonna do little commas like we did throughout here And it's even okay with the darker color to go and almost, um, not fully, but do sort of an outline of the flower. So I'm going to move this up here so you can see it, what I mean better. But, okay, say we're doing this one here. So we're doing commas in here, but then the actual flower shape is out. So I'm going to take, I've been staying kind of within the range of that initial red that we did. I'm going to come out and with this and I'm going to kind of flick here and there on the outline of where that is. So if that makes sense, just so we can kind of see more of an outline of where the flower is and kind of get its shape. Because um, we kind of lose that as we keep adding layers. So on these flowers, we're just going to take just on the outside here, there, and then in the middle as well. And just do commas just like that so we kind of get that shape back and we're going to do that for all of our reds So you can kind of get a pattern going. What I like to do is there's more than three sides to this flower, but I like to do the dark on three sides. So um, let's say I do it here, here, and here. I still have two more sides to my flower, but I don't want to outline the whole thing. So I work from outwards in. So I do my three points um, opposite each other, and then I kind of just do the commas opposite that. And that's really the pattern that I do. So. This one here gets off the page. I'm only going to do two, and then I'm just going to kind of do one um, opposite in further, but opposite the other two. So I have one left here that I didn't do yet, so I'm going to pick my three sides like that, and then just kind of go in on the opposite. I think I missed this one up here. And I'm just going to move over to the other side and I'm just going to do that same exact thing on the other side. Okay, so we have all our dark in there. Now I'm going to wash off my brush. I believe I'm done with it. <laughs> For now, anyways. And then we're going to go to the, we're actually going to the pointed tip now. Okay, so we're going to be working with just the black. Black. 
end, we're going to just use the tip of your pointed brush and we're gonna put a little dot in the center of your flower. So we'll start with the red again. Little dot in the center. And then you're gonna kind of do just like commas as well, but just kind of outline the flower. So this one I do four points. You can do five, um, four or five. They don't all have to be the same. And then just a couple inside. So a little dot first and then just, see like this one I did five, just mix them up. And you can put your brush back in as much as you have to. So um, if you don't have enough paint on the brush, you're gonna kind of get like a smudge look, kind of like you're somewhat missing painting there. And this is not really the look we want for this type of painting. So make sure your brush is loaded up with enough paint each time when you're gonna do these. And what's cool about this is you're not fault. There's no actually like distinct line to your flower. Like you can't really pinpoint the exact part that's out. <laughs> um, but that's what makes them look the way they do. See, like right here, we kind of got this. I'll give you an example here. I always like to give examples just so I like to be as clear as possible, just so you can kind of see the, the rights and the wrongs. So if you can look at this flower here, you can see I didn't have enough paint. I don't know if it's getting smudgy there, but I didn't have enough paint here. So it kind of gave that look of being smudged, whereas these other three are pretty clear. So that's kind of what we want to go for. We do not want that smudge. So I did... On the fourth flick, I didn't have enough paint on my brush, so I'll just, I'm just going to go over it again. And then we're just going to go to the other side and do the same thing. And if you're left-handed, you can slide your finger through it and ruin your painting <laughs> like I do every time I paint. <laughs> Usually I start from this side over because I everything I do, like if I make signs or do anything, I paint from this side and I work my way over so my arm isn't through it. But tonight I didn't because I'm trying to give you guys an example of, of uh, what's going on. If I start over here, it's further from the camera. So I kind of want you to see my first steps of each step being closest to you. But that might result in a big black sponge painting. <laughs> 
and say she's the artist. Uh, my painting looks better than hers. Now we are going to do the same thing with the white ones. Just do a little dot in the center. And I try to do, because they're the white ones, I try to do them, um, these ones I kind of went heavy handed because we want them to stand out as the darker side of the flag. I want the black in there just to accentuate, but I want the point maybe not to be like, don't be as heavy handed. So, and this might be where this is too thick of a pointy end, but I'm going to go as light handed as possible. And also what helps is just, you can even wash your brush off and then restart with less paint. Um, a lot of the times as we paint, our paint keeps moving down the brush and then it gets thicker and thicker. And every time we dunk in this fine pointed tip now becomes a thicker pointed tip. So um, what I like to do is sometimes I just wash my brush and start all over again. Uh, and then you don't have that build up of paint. So see, whereas I had a ton of paint all down my brush, now the actual tip of it is just has the paint on it. So I'm able to uh, achieve finer lines that way. So... And in this, I'm just putting the very tip of the paintbrush in the paint, not like the whole thing. Is everyone liking this painting so far? You can throw a life in there or a heart if you like it, if you're having fun. Christine says, yes, but your flowers are so much nicer than mine. I don't know about that. <laughs> Sometimes we're our own worst critics. <laughs> I'm sure yours look beautiful.
just gonna look at my example quickly. I don't remember if I put white ones in or not for the red. Let me just look real quick and see what I got going on here. Yeah, I did, okay. Okay, so while we have this still going on here, I'm just gonna, actually, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do this first. We'll do it last. We'll see how we like it better. Okay, so if you've reached this point and you are caught up, um, we are going to blow dry this dry. The next step, okay, so for, let me turn this so I can see you. Well, you can't, I can't see you, but <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to you if I can at least see myself. So I printed out um, this. Tonight I'm going to show you uh, just how I stencil before I paint. Um, sometimes I do freehand, sometimes I stencil it. So if you did print out uh, Maple Leaf for yourself, um, that is one way to do it if you want to freehand it. Um, you can either take chalk or a pencil after it's dry and you can kind of draw it out first or you can chalk it um, and then just paint it afterwards. So I'm going to show you how I get this onto here, but we have to make sure it's really dry first. So I'm going to take and blow dry it for a couple minutes. And if you have to finish up your flowers, do that. If you're going to be blow drying with me, then I will meet you back here in like two minutes. So what I'm going to do is, as long as this will work, as long as um, your painting is dry. So let me situate myself here. Okay. So we're going to kind of plan out where we want this maple leaf. Uh, sometimes what helps is if you cut out the maple leaf so that it's, so you can see it around the paper, um, which I might do just to show you. So if I just, it doesn't have to be cut out perfect, but if I just make it closer to the actual object, then I can see um, where it's actually gonna lay on here, on my painting. Because sometimes all that paper around the object, you can't really judge if it's in the center. So I just did a quick cut out and then I can place it on there and you can kind of see the difference is like, it looks a lot, it's easy, a lot easier to judge like what's, what's uh, the center is. So right there. And then I have graphite paper tonight. Sometimes I do a chalk method, but I'm going to do graphite paper tonight and I'm just going to tape it down. If you don't have tape, don't worry. You can just hold it down. Uh, most of the time I actually just hold these down, but I'll tape it tonight. And then I have the graphite paper here. 
the foggy side goes up. There'll be the foggy side and the shiny side. And I just slide it under there. The reason I tape it first, I make my placement, I tape it um, before I slide this paper under is because once I put that paper under, I can't really judge where the center is anymore. So if I have it taped, I know even if I raise that up and I stick this under when I lay, let it lay down naturally, it's going to be where I placed it. And then I'm just going to take a pen and trace around the maple leaf. Now you can, I have a thick edge here. I'm not going to double trace the edge because I'm just going to paint it thicker. But you can if you want to. Let's see what I did here. I just said I wasn't going to, and I did it. And this is just a rough, doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to paint it anyways, so I just do a rough sketch or a rough tracing. And then when I lift this up, you should see the trace line, and you can just peel that off gently so you don't lick your painting. But if it's dry, it shouldn't come off. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see. That's kind of what you, you can kind of see the outline there. So I'm just going to take um, my pointy brush and I'm going to outline the maple leaf in black. And I kind of like the look of the thicker line, so I'm going to keep it. If you just want a thin line, then you can just do a thin line around. It kind of makes the maple leaf stand out a bit. And what I usually do is, if I want to make a line thicker, but I just trace to the skinny line, then I just follow that skinny line to start and then I can go back and just kind of lay my brush along that same line but make it thicker. That way I'm kind of getting the same thickness all the way around. So I'm always using that original line as a guide first. And I started with the wrong side again, so my hand will probably be through this as well. <laughs> I never learn. So I'm just following my line there, and then I just can thicken it up after. So I'm gonna finish this leaf, this side of the leaf, and then I'm just gonna go, it's gonna take, so you can see down here is a bit thicker than this line. So I'm just gonna take just slightly over on the line and just go back down beside it. And then that makes it thicker but I still have that line to kind of guide where I'm going.
So I put my first video today on YouTube. I was a bit nervous to do it. Um, I think because in my Facebook group, I know a lot of the people are local. And I know that I have a good following of people that, you know, they're, I don't know, like, uh, they just, they, they support me and I just feel comfortable on that page. I think maybe because I've had my page for over two years now. So I kind of created a bond through in paint, in home paint parties. And then also just being online, showing like my creations and stuff, I've kind of gained a customer base. So putting on my stuff on YouTube, my video is just, it's out there for the whole world. And so I got a little nervous, but I did that today. Um, so if you want to see more videos, you can always subscribe to that. It's, it's under Artisticress as well. But I've been wanting to do it for a while and I guess I got up the courage to do it today. Alright, so once you have it outlined, I'm just going to blow dry it again quickly, um, just because we're going to put the red in the middle, and if uh, the red touches the black, it's going to bleed into it. So I'm just going to blow dry it real super quick. I'll show you quickly just in case everyone's not caught up um if you have a stencil and you don't have graphite paper um you can easily transfer this on with chalk so if you take i don't have chalk here i don't think but um if you take a piece of chalk and you just put it all over the back so um depending on what color your painting is so say your painting is very dark if you want to transfer this on, you would cover this in a light colored chalk and then vice versa. So if you have a light painting, then you would put dark chalk on here and you would just put the chalk um, where the where you're going to be tracing. If you can't see, then just cover the whole back. And then once you put that down exactly like I did with the graphite paper, um, you've basically created the back of this to be a graphite paper. So once you tape it down and you trace it it's and you lift it up, you're going to have that line left where the chalk is. Um, I use that method a lot for my wood signs only because it e very easily wipes off. So if I make a mistake, um, I can just wipe it and start again. Also, it wipes off easy for like if I, once I do an order, I don't want that to be left for people to see. Right. I just want it to look painted. So um, with the graphite paper, uh, sometimes you get like um, a black residue or you'll get uh, even like a smudge. Um, or it just the fact that if it wasn't perfect, you it's very hard to erase. So if you are looking, watching this video and you're not doing it with me, um, and you're like, oh shoot, I don't have graphite paper. If you have a piece of chalk, you can easily do the same exact thing that I did with the graphite paper. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go in with my small flat brush and I'm going to paint the center of the maple leaf red. If I have enough here, I'm going to have to get some more. Okay. 
Now this here, the, the look depends on what you want. So I'm gonna show you my example that I had posted up. This is three coats of red. And I wanted the, the flowers to show through a little bit to kind of give the maple leaf a bit of a design. You can kind of see they're popping through. If you don't like that look and you just want it solid, then just do more coats. If you want it to even pop through more, then just do less. So really it's just up to you what you want to do, um, what your preference is. But I did three coats and you don't have to wait till it's completely dry to do the three coats because acrylic paint dries very fast. So you can just go in and paint. And the, the key really to getting your coats to dry quickly um, without having that bumpy look is you have to smooth out your paint. So if you put a lot, I see people do this a lot in home parties. If you put a ton of paint on your brush and you're going like this and then you leave, if you can see, see those lines, you leave those, those are going to take a lot longer to dry and when you go over with a second coat it's going to take those thicker layers right off and then you're going to have basically you're going to be starting at square one just on those sections it's going to make it look really uneven so what i do is if my brush is loaded i just use as much space as i need for the amount of paint so if i have that there then i just go further until it's gone like just keeps stretching it out as far as you can before you move on. And then this is gonna, like this right here, like I touched it, like I just painted that, it's already dry. And then I, so basically when I'm done painting this, I can go right back again and do a second coat. But it's when you get those thicker sections, you're gonna run into some trouble um, with your paint coming off if you paint too quickly. And plus it just doesn't look like a smooth, a smooth application. So see where I have that there? I'm just gonna, and this is where you can go lighter handed. So the harder you push down, when I push hard like that, I'm gonna get those lines. If I just go very soft and gentle, those lines are gonna disappear. And that's really what you wanna go for. My mom says she's going to go check out my YouTube channel. Watch all my videos. Just leave them to run. Leave them to run while you're doing something. And then I get viewing time and then more people will be able to see it. That's what I said to Dave. I said, Dave, when you're doing like the lawn, just leave my video running. <laughs> It'll look like somebody watched my video and then more people will get to see it. It's so hard when you start out on something. Like, I think I have 800 followers on my Facebook page. It took a couple of years. But I think I have like six people subscribed to my YouTube channel so far. So it's like squ square one every time I start in a different platform. But I always think you got to start somewhere. And in two years from now, then I'll be hopefully have a lot of viewers. And then when you play, paint with a flat tip brush, you can paint with it two different ways. So right now, right here, I have a wide open space. So I'm going back and forth, like on the flat side of my brush. When I did the stem, it was, my brush was thicker than the stem. So I turned it sideways and I was able to use it the skinny way. So you have two ways you can use this brush. And I, well, you have more than two, but. Those are the two if you're painting like a surface, filling in an area. And if for some reason it's not dry enough in between, you can quickly just blow dry it. But I'm going to go right back in 
And I'm going to put the second coat because it's pretty dry over here. I think, too, it's important to take into consideration your workspace. So I know I have, I'm just starting my second layer. I have the whole leaf to fill in. So I take my paint and I, like, really glob it on. You can see it's thick because I know I have this whole space where I can spread that out. Um, and then also that's, you know, a quicker way to fill in an area. But when I start, when I like get to the point where I'm at the sides again, and then I take into consideration the amount of paint I have on my brush because I know I won't be able to disperse it out um, as much as I would have when it was empty, right? So let's say like this little section here, then I just put a tiny bit of paint on because I know I'm not going to need as much. And you, that's how you achieve not having those thick lines. Okay, so that's two coats there. I'm gonna do a third one, but I just kinda wanna show you where, where we're at. So if you like that you can see the flowers kind of sticking through a bit more, then you can leave it. It kind of just looks like your maple leaves patterned, which I think is really cool too. Um, I'm just gonna do it one more time. And it's the more layers you add, it's gonna take a little longer to dry. So I'm just gonna give it a quick blow dry. take long at all because acrylic dries so super fast so I'm going to go in with a third coat and the more coats I put the lighter handed I'm going to go because if you're too hard on your brush you're going to scrape the paint out from underneath because it's still not that it's wet but it's fresh right so you don't want to take um your bottom layers off because it's very hard to get it even again once you've done that. It is possible, but it, it's very, it's hard, but it's possible. I'm also trying to brush all in one way, all one, like all one way on this so that the, there's no pattern because the pattern is underneath. So I want the strokes all to be going the same way.
So we got that there. Now we're going to add a little bit of accents to the maple leaf. So we're going to go back to our fine tip brush. And we're just going to add them here and there. So it doesn't have to be every leaf, like every edge of the leaf. It's kind of just hit or miss. Um, there's no like pattern to it or I just kind of go with whatever feels good. So for example, we have like a solid line here that's pretty long. So I'm just going to take this brush here and just very light hand to just kind of go down like that. So we have a little accent. Same with here. And I'm going to follow the line of the of the leaf. So this one was straight, so I went straight. This one is curved. I am going to just throw in a little curve there. So I'm going to skip this section here. I'm going to basically do it on every downward motion. So um, this one here, I went up and then I went down. So on this down part, I'm going to put a little accent. And then same here, I went up, but I went down on this side. So I'm going to give it a little bit there. And then I'm going to skip this one altogether because it's kind of small. And then down in these corners here, you could even do like a little, um, like a little L shape. So just down in like that and then kind of like that. And I'm going to go along with the white and I'm going to do something similar. So yeah, so it's every, so if I think about, um, if I'm going up the hill from this side, so I'm going up the hill, well, down the hill technically, but up the hill here, I'm not going to put an accent and I don't know if this is just something in my head or if this is something that's actually legit but to me it just looks it makes sense that way you can keep them without having too many accents so like if I didn't know if I wanted to put it here or here and I put two then it might seem like a little bit much so in my mind same with lettering I always just think of the downward stroke and that's where I put the accent hopefully that makes sense and then for the white um there's gonna be a lot less but I'm just gonna kind of do it beside it. So just like that. And I'm not even gonna do as much. So now say here, cause you've got your, this is basically your highlights and your low light, right? So I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna do a little white one on that side. Like I said, there's really no right or wrong. Just kind of go with how you think it feels. And in my original painting, I had done some little white highlights here too. Um, maybe I'll add a couple in and we'll see how it looks. It doesn't have to be every single flower but just a couple of little white flicks here and there. And not on the white ones, just the red ones. I add these in after because the maple leaf is on top of some of them. So I just want to hit or miss. I don't want it to be as pronounced as doing um, all the steps we did beforehand. And also with doing the flowers, we knew we were going to put the maple leaf over top. The reason why I continued the pattern all the way down, besides the fact that they show through the maple leaf, is that it's very hard to get the effect of this looking continual around without actually doing it. So it's possible, but it's just a lot easier to go with the flow. It goes with the flow better if you just do that and then you just put your object over top. Um, but for this sp specific one, I liked that you kind of could see the pattern through anyways. I 
I didn't put up pictures of the last paint night I did. I have about five or six people that sent me pictures. I didn't post them yet because I wanted to see if anyone else was going to do the replays. But it's been about, I don't know, maybe a week, a week and a half now. So I'm going to go on there and repost the, or post the pictures of everyone doing the, the colorful night sky one. Uh, so if you want to send me or tag me in your finished project, I will post it on my page and show people what beautiful work you did and kind of what happens on virtual paint nights. All right. So what I'm gonna do is put my, just my initials at the bottom. Don't forget to sign your work. And I'll just throw them in the flower beside the flower here. And that really completes this. And we have a finished project. And I think it looks super cute. I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing on um, July 10th and 11th. If I can do this without ruining this one maybe i'll dry it first let me blow dry it real quick i don't want them to stick together okay, okay so we are going to be doing this one i did put up a Everyone voted kind of like a poll to see which one you wanted to do. So I'm going to stick this in here. So we're going to be doing this one. That is July 10th and 11th. I'm going to be dividing it into two nights because this painting is, um, it's more intricate. So the first night we're going to be doing the background. Um, we're going to learn how to blend the boards and kind of make them look like boards. And also I think we'll do the jar. And then the next night, I think that's a Saturday, we'll do the flowers. So we're gonna learn kind of how layering, how to layer and and yeah. So I would say the first night will maybe be about an hour and a half, the second night maybe two hours. But feel free to join me for that. I do have an event up on my page. If you wanna click going, you will get a reminder. So just look for that event there. And I will be coming out tomorrow with two new kids' um, art kits. So I finished them today, um, and they will be posted tomorrow. So you can look out for that. And, yeah, and then if you want to be nice <laughs> and uh, go on YouTube and subscribe or like any of my videos, um, that would be awesome. I think I'm – I haven't checked uh, in a while, but I think I'm sitting at six sus subscribers. But I'll take it for the first day and – um, Rome wasn't built overnight. So, <laughs> uh, you have a great night, everybody. And don't forget to either send me your pictures or tag me. I want to see your finished projects. Don't be hard on yourself. They will all look beautiful. I can guarantee it. Even if they don't look like mine, they are not supposed to. Um, everybody's different. So all our paintings are going to be different. So have a great night. Um, I'm really grateful that you joined me and I will see you, um, probably before the 10th because I'll be doing more lives, but 10th and 11th if you want to join me. Have a great night and happy Canada Day!